Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The extinction event at the end of the Permian was one of the most severe in the history of life on this planet, caused mainly by the intense flood basalt eruptions stemming from the Siberian traps in what is now modern Russia, which released huge quantities of sulphur dioxide and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, up to 70% of all terrestrial species and 81% of marine species vanished by around 251.9 million years ago. Before the extinction, synapsid proto-mammals had been the dominant land-based vertebrates, filling all kinds of ecological niches. Post-extinction, while several groups visited into the Triassic, including the ancestors of modern mammals, the dominance of the synapsids had come to an end with the previously small and rare sauropsid reptiles diversifying rapidly to fill many of the vacated niches. In the oceans, which were hit particularly hard by the great dying, many new groups have emerged, including the famous ichthyosaurs and their relatives. These sometimes incredibly dolphin or whale-like reptiles diversified very quickly, evolving from small semi-aquatic ancestors that survived the extinction event and went on to produce a whole host of forms within just a few million years. Early on in the history of the ichthyosauromorphs, two major lineages split off from each other. These were the well-known ichthyosauriforms, which developed into fairly large pelagic forms with very fish-like body plans, and the more poorly known Hupesusians, which were a delightfully strange group of marine reptiles that inhabited coastal regions during the early Triassic. These lineages are united by a suite of anatomical traits, including the presence of an anterior flange on the humerus and radius, the forelimb being as long or longer than the hind limb, and the front feet being at least three quarters the length of the upper arm and lower arm combined. Where ichthyosauromorphs fit on the sauropsid reptile family tree has always been poorly understood, although more recent studies from the 2020s often place them as members of Archelosauria, with their closest modern relatives being turtles and archosaurs. The Hupesusians appeared within a few million years of the end Permian mass extinction, with the cradle of their evolution seemingly located in what is now Hubei province of China. During the early Triassic, this region was covered by warm tropical coastal waters, being an ideal location for marine reptiles to thrive. Hupesusians generally resembled a cross between crocodilians and the later more derived ichthyosaurs, having paddle-like limbs, fusiform bodies, and generally elongated toothless snouts. All known forms were well adapted for life in the ocean, probably giving birth to live young and being unable to walk about on land. These were also generally small animals, with the largest forms being only about 2 metres or just over 6 feet long. The type genus was Hupesuchus, from the Hubei province of China, measuring about 1 metre or 3 feet long. This animal possessed elongated pointed jaws that lacked teeth. It was once thought that Hupesuchus utilised its specialised mouth parts to grab small fish or to probe for invertebrates, although recent studies have shown that the genus was probably a filter feeder like modern baleen whales. Indeed, the toothless jaws may have possessed baleen in order to filter tiny organisms. Hupesuchus lived in a restrictive lagoon environment with low productivity which is probably what drove its ancestors to specialise in feeding on zooplankton. It was closely related to the larger Parahupesuchus, which was the biggest member of the group at about 2 metres long. It was also a ram-feeding planktonivore, with a superficially pelican-like skull and a strangely reinforced rib cage, which may have provided a form of defence against predators. Meanwhile, the genus Eretmorifis possessed a flattened beak-like snout, making the animal look like some sort of reptilian platypus. About a metre long, this genus was quite heavily built, with a rigid and flexible torso, and probably spent much of its time foraging for invertebrates on the seabed. Interestingly, Eret Marifis displayed polydactyly, with six digits on each foot, a condition also known in ichthyosaurs, and may have been an adaptation for developing larger flippers. All these animals were native to a span of only a few million years at the beginning of the Triassic, being an example of the highly specialised forms that can emerge after severe mass extinctions. However, despite their highly derived features, the Hupesukins did not go on to thrive and prosper for reasons that are not well understood, dying out by around 247 million years ago. Perhaps conditions in the region of coastal southern China changed too much for these animals to keep up, 
or maybe the Grips like to receive increased competition from their ichthyosauriform cousins. This clade first appears in the fossil record very shortly after the end Permian mass extinction, about 251 million years ago. The most basal known group of these were the Omphalosaurids, which were specialised durophagus animals, native to what is now North America and Eurasia from the early to middle Triassic. With comparatively short snouts, the Omphalosaurids appear to have fed primarily on hard-shelled invertebrates such as ammonoids, inhabiting open ocean environments, and living somewhat like modern marine turtles. The namesake of this group is the genus Omphalosaurus, which means button lizard, referring to its strange, highly specialised round teeth. Aside from dental fossils, this animal is quite poorly understood, although fragmentary postcranial remains indicate that the genus may have measured up to 5 metres or 16 feet long, which is much larger than the other members of the family. Although filling a niche somewhat similar to that of placodonts, Omphalosaurus has been proposed to be an ammonite specialist in contrast to the former, which focused more heavily on bivalves. Interestingly, this genus was first described all the way back in 1906, although its fragmentary fossil record made classifying it very difficult. It was only in the 2010s when more complete members of Omphalosauridae would be found, and these were both much smaller and stranger animals. The most famous were genus Carterhynchus, a cute little guy that measured only 40 centimetres or 16 inches long, possessing a short blunt snout, a lizard-like torso, and relatively large cartilage-covered flippers. This odd animal is native to Anhui province, China, and may have been able to come ashore like modern turtles, although this is difficult to convincingly demonstrate. When originally described, it was thought that Carterhynchus was probably a suction feeder, consuming small, soft-bodied prey. Although the recent finding of molariform teeth in the genus have instead given rise to suggestions that it was a durophagus feeder instead. This would be one of about five times in which ichthyosaurs and their relatives independently developed this kind of crushing dentition. Living in warm, shallow tropical seas, Carterhynchus swam in a slow, eel-like manner, utilising its long and lizard-like tail to propel itself through the water. It lived in the same time and region as its close relative Sclerocormus, which is a slightly younger and larger animal, present about 248 million years ago. Measuring about 1.6 metres long, or about 2.5 feet, its proportions were very unusual for an early ichthyosaur relative, with a tiny rounded skull, short torso, and a very long whip-like tail. The snout was also very short, comprising only about 30% of the head, although its eyes were proportionally very large, which gave Sclerocormus a somewhat frog-like face. Like Carterhynchus, it was initially thought to have been toothless, although crushing malariform teeth have been since described in the animal, meaning that it also fed on hard-shelled prey. It would have been a fairly slow swimmer, living somewhat like modern sea turtles, and possibly being able to haul itself out onto land like a seal. Like the Hupesukians, Omphalosaurids were successful only for a relatively short period, emerging directly after the end Permian mass extinction, but succumbing to their own demise by the Middle Triassic about 235 million years ago, which was probably caused by volcanism and sea level changes. These strange, very short-snouted forms lived alongside animals that were more closely related to the true ichthyosaurs, such as the genus Chauhusaurus, a contemporary of Carterhynchus, measuring up to one metre or just over three feet long, it would have looked much more like the iconic Jurassic ichthyosaurs, albeit with a longer torso and a tail not as well adapted for fast fish-like swimming. The snout was pointed, while the overall size of the skull was relatively small, which, when combined with its bulbous teeth, suggests that Chauhusaurus was another Jurophagus form. In addition, the shortness of the skull is unlike later ichthyosaurs, which indicates that the common ancestors of Hupesukians and Ichthyosauromorphs were probably fairly short-snouted, like many modern lizards. This genus also represents the earliest known example of sauropsid viviparae in the fossil record, with Chauhusaurus giving birth to live young in a marine context. However, the babies were born head first, which is very unusual for a fully aquatic tetrapod, which usually give birth to their young tail first, so that the babies are less likely to drown. This example of unintelligent design suggests that viviparae and ichthyosaurs and their relatives almost certainly developed in their terrestrial ancestors, 
and was retained once they shifted to fully marine lifestyles. Later, more derived forms would drop this unideal feature. Other early ichthyosaur relatives included Parvi Nertator from the early to mid Triassic of British Columbia, which was a tiny animal less than one meter long that fed on soft bodied prey. It was closely related to the Japanese genus Utatsusaurus, a larger animal up to three meters long that swam in an eel like manner and lacked a dorsal fin, unlike later true ichthyosaurs. Along with the widespread genus Gripia, it would be from such animals as these that the first true ichthyosaurs would emerge by around 245 million years ago, as well as the first truly large macro predatory forms. Although we should probably stop here for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. The next episode will be covering the soft bodied cephalopods, including the extinct belemnites and the ancestors of octopus, squid, and cuttlefish. See you again soon. Cheerio.